Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Hayaymi Gitin Ayin Ches. We are holding on the second line from the top of the Amid. Afilu Huima Bemita, Eina Megureshes. We have learned yesterday in a Mishnah that one can deliver a get to his wife directly by placing it in her hands or by means of placing it into her property as well, her home, her chatzar. But if it's a chatzah that belongs to the husband, or the home belongs to the husband, then you can't just place it in that property. It doesn't work. You haven't given her anything. And Mishnah adds the following phrase, Afilu ho'ima b'mita, even if the bed is next to her in bed, it doesn't work. Amarava lo'yishonu, that's only a concern, Ella b'mita shaloi. It doesn't work because the bed is his bed. Avo b'mita shaloi megoreshes, but suppose the bed belongs to her, it works. Because... He put it into her, her property, so to speak. Tani nami hachu. We have the same in a brayso. Rabbi Lazo Eimer b'mito shaloi eni begoreshes. If the bed, is, if the get is found in his bed, it doesn't work. B'mito shaloi megoreshes. But if it's next to the isha in her bed, then it works. Asks the Gemara how? B'mito shaloi megoreshes. How can it work? Okay, say it's her bed, but we have a problem. Kelav shaloi keach brushus moicher. You see, this is a whole discussion, a whole machlokism of Basra Pei. Hey, Rashi says, suppose I want to sell you something, and I, I put the item into your kli. You're the customer. So you're the loikeach. It's your kli. But that kli happens to be sitting in my house. Kelav shaloikeach brashus meicher. Does that work or not? Perhaps yes. After all, it's placed in your container. But remember, your container is sitting in my property. So if we say that placing a get into her bed, which is situated in his property, constitutes a divorce, constitutes delivery to the Isha, would you conclude from this that Kelav Shaloikeach versus Meicher acquires a, makes a Kenyan? Shamas Mino. Right? So if we say Kelav Shaloikeach versus Meicher, Shamas Mino, we can prove from here Kelav Shaloikeach versus Meicher Kanalikeach. Does that mean to say that? Generally speaking, a person can make a kidney like that? Placing something into the kli of a lekeach, despite the fact that it's located in the meicher in the seller's home, it creates its new its own environment and allows me to be kinda in that kli, yeah? Well, this is a complicated sugya, and it's not so clear. Is there a right from this Mishnah that it works? Like Sriha says, well, no, not so fast. We're speaking about a special case here, the Gavaya Asara. Remember, the bed is very tall. Ten Facham high. Right? So there is ten, a ten Tefach gap between floor and bottom of bed. Oh, that's... Uh, as she says, that's a, it's its own rishus, its own environment. And therefore, if she could actually make a Kenyan and receive the get which is sitting on that bed. So the bed is hers, but the floor is his, it doesn't matter because the bed is so tall. You know, fine, the, the bed is very tall and high, but what about the kari, the legs of the bed are positioned on his floor? So his, his, his floor is supporting the bed. So it, it should identify with his place. I'm not concerned about the People are not concerned about it. People are not mock, not particular about that little square inch where the leg is sitting on. And as long as I can use the, you know, the area beneath the bed, it's big enough to be used properly. It's its own place, so I'm not mock, on that. And he allows it to sort of put her clear there. It's something so insignificant that we don't reckon with. And therefore, the top of that bed is considered her place. Because after all, it's her bed. It belongs to her, right? And we ignore the fact that it's sitting on his floor. Now, Mishnah continues. If you place the get, let's say Chekah in her bosom, in her own clothing, whatever, or Latech Kalsa in her little uh, basket, Migurashas. It's considered like having uh, been, been delivered to the Isha directly. Amai, why? Once again, the same problem. 
Okay, say it belongs to her. But where is she standing? In his property. Amai, Caleb shalakech b'shus meicharu. And he throws it into her basket. The basket sitting on, on his floor. So once again, the same issue. How does that uh, make it, how does that work? Why is it considered a, a get delivered to the Isha? Right, so the Kasha is on the Kalsa, on this basket. We're speaking that this sort of mini basket was was hanging from her. She was holding it. In this case, the basket is not bottled to his, to his property. So even though they're standing in the house, it doesn't matter because it's on her body. It's hanging from her, and just like her hand is hers. Likewise, this kli. V'chein Amar, Rabbi Lezer, Amar Oishio, the same pshat. Kigayim was speaking, Kigayim Shahisa Kalsat Liyabo. That solves the problem. Rabbi Shem Malagish Amar, a step further. You don't have to have it hanging on her. Kshura, as long as it's tied to her, that identifies with her. Ava B'she'enot Liyabo, even though it's not actually hanging off the ground, it's okay. Even if it's sitting on the floor, but it's tied to her. It's an extension of her. Rav Adabar Rav Amar, he gives another solution to this kasha. How can you deliver again into the kalsa which is situated in his house? It's sitting between her legs, and a person's not mocked on where his wife uh, will sit, like her area that she can sit on, that's, that's uh, something that a person is not particular about, so the basket sitting in that location as well is totally in her domain. Rav Rishar Shibar Rav Dimi Amar, another teretz, another option. We're speaking that this husband was a kalsois seller, a kalsois dealer. So he has a room full of these little baskets, and he doesn't really care if there's another basket sitting there. It's meant for that. So it's like her place. It's like her rishos. Okay, solution number five. Even if the basket is sitting in his property, in his house, without any of these, uh, you know, scenarios, sitting straightforward on his floor, it's her kli, but his rishos. How can you place a get into that kli and have it considered hers? Because, you know, a person is not makbid, is not particular. On the mokum chayka of the isha. On her bosom, on her air, on her clothing, and, and the makam that she puts the kalsa down. But it's not makam on these things. Right? When you marry a woman, it's <laughs> with the awareness that she'll bring her kalim with her. So, therefore, this is an exception. Even though her kli is sitting in his rishos, he's letting her use the rishos, and the, let, the get is considered delivered to her domain. And she's Mugurashas. Omar Biyach, oh, Omar Biyach, my time, Omar Ravar, my time there, Biyach. Why do we say that a Mokim Kalsa belongs to her? We say, you know, the Makbid, Leo Mokim Cheka, Leo Mokim Kalsa, the person's not Makbid on these little areas. Tani Nami Hachi, we have a riot to Rabbi Biyach on the most recent shot in this halacha. Zorka Lola Tarke Cheka, or Tarke Kalsa, Tarke Kaldava Shei Huke Kalsa, it's not only Cheka or Kalsa, any other, you know, utensil which is designated for her use. It's Miyuchet for her Tashmish. So a person is not Makvit. His wife has her things with her. Harizim Gurashe, so it works. Why? Apparently because the, the reason behind the halacha is a lack of Hakpad, a lack of particularity. He allows her to bring these things, to have these things even in his house. So it's considered like her rishos. Now, when the Bryce says, Koldova Shoku Kalsa, another a similar item which is compared to Kalsa, so you might, what are we including here? Let's say Taska, the Achlaba Tamri, including a little, um, little uh, kind of sack, a little you know, container, where she, from which she eats her dates, where she keeps her dates. So that uh, little sack, the little sack, is also, uh, it's hers, and the makam of the sack is hers, basically. Little insignificant um, utensils and containers. Well, he knows that she has their, she's not, ma- he's not makbid on that mokim, and therefore, answers the kasha, putting a get into that mokim is considered her rishis.
Continues the Mishnah. So a fellow has a get. He gives it to her wife. But perhaps he's uncomfortable to call it a get. So he pretends that it's just a loan document. Here, take this shtar Or another example. She, she discovers the, the get sitting on the floor there behind him. Uh, she picks it up, not knowing that it's a get kairos. She reads it. Oh my! She says, "Very git, very git. Look, this is her get." Uh, suddenly, she discovers her get. Ain't I get a sheyemla It doesn't work unless the, the husband specifically tells her, "Look, this is your get." And Rishonim has several reasons either because you know she has to be aware that you're divorcing. Otherwise, she'll come right back. That's not called divorcing. Others explain that. You know, the Pasuk says, Vanasam he has to give her a get as get. You know, if he doesn't declare it as a get, perhaps he's just, you know, giving it to her, you know, to have a look, to read, to edit. In fact, Tasis brings, the read brings that in all situations, we require a husband to say this thing, to, to announce that it's a get. Hey, Gitech. And also, hurry at Materis Lacholadam, you're free to marry. So that's the Nusach that goes along with delivering the get. Continues the mission. Nasam Biyadavi Yishena. Perhaps he placed a get into her hands while she was asleep. In the other she wakes up, she reads the document, and suddenly she discovers, boom, very gita, it's a get, ain't a get. Once again, this is another example of a non-working get. He has to clearly tell her, look, this is a get. This is your get. Asks the Gemara. Let's go to the um, case where she found it on the floor, right? The Matsose uh, She discovers this, you know, parchment on the floor. She picks it up. It doesn't work unless he follows by saying, Hey, Gitach. Well, he says, Hey, Gitach. It works, right? But she picked it off the floor. There's no Vinasa Biyada. There was no personal transmission between husband and wife. Ki Amala, Hey, Gitach. So, fine. She's holding it. She's wondering. And he says, Oh, this is your get. My hobby. Why, is, why does that work? It's like, you know, it's like a person tells his wife, Look, there's your get. Pick it off the floor. It doesn't work. But my rabbi, rabbi tells us, clearly it doesn't work. It doesn't work because there's no v'nasan b'yad, there's no personal delivery. Ema says the more will describe the Mishnah's case as follows. She picked it out. She pulled it out from behind him. Meaning he had the get sort of tucked in, you know, between his, uh, you know, into his belt, right? And she, uh, she walked over behind him and she pulled it out. So it's not off the ground. It came from him. So it works. Well, it's not any better. Shalfas said, even if she pulled it out of his belt, we need him to give it to her. She can't be the one taking it without him giving it. What happened was he bent his uh, you know, side over to her. And... By doing so, he indicated, look, uh, look, there's your get, take it out. And she pulled it out. So since he um, bent himself over to her, he brought it closer to her. That is sufficient for Vinasan Biyada, even though she actually uh, 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 you know, pulled it out. Tani Amihachi, we have the same in a brisa, that in fact, this is required. He has to participate in the transmission of the get. He um, tells her, look, this is the shtar chayv, or she pulled it out from, you know, uh, you know, his belt behind him. So, it's not like matzase me'achayrov, that's the Lashon of the Mishnah, matzase, she discovered it, which sounds like she discovered it on her own. Here it says, shalfase me'achayrov, which is different, uh, has different connotation, which indicates that he took part in giving over the get, he sort of brought it closer to her. The problem is he had pretended that it's a shtar chayv, that's what he told her. Karasai vareyu gita. In a get, doesn't work. Ache yoimar. Lo he gitach. Okay, so bottom line is we. We have proven from here that the um, the case must be speaking that he actually participated. He leaned over to her 
uh, and that's considered v'nosam The Problem here is a different problem because in the first case he said kinsi shtar chayvze, and the second case he didn't say anything. So uh, you need to add those words. But in terms of the um, delivering of the get, it only works if he participated. He did v'nosam beyada. He did something to bring it closer to him. Okay. So having said that, let's address the other deficiency: the, the fact that he his lack of of uh, of, of declaration. He didn't say Hagitech. So Rabbi says it doesn't work unless he actually follows through and follows up by saying Hagitech. But he doesn't have to re- redo it. He doesn't have to take it back and give it to her again. As long as he gets up and says, look, this is your get. That's enough. Shem no. You have to redo the process. It doesn't work. It was a faulty delivery, right? He gave it to her without, you know, so he has to take it back. And as he's giving it back to her the second time, it's accompanied by that announcement, here's your get. So according to this shita, hey gitach must take place as he's giving it to her, but not later. The Mishnah continues. It's another example. He placed it directly in her hands while she was asleep, unaware. That's not called a gerushin, right? She wakes up and she discovers this thing and she reads it. Lo and behold, this is my get. Ain't no get that doesn't work because he failed to tell her. Achi yermila, hey gitach, David Rebbe. So he has to follow up by saying hey gitach. He's not to take it back. He just has to follow up with those words. Once again, Rabbi Shimon Gamliel Eimer, Rabbi Shimon Lazar Eimer, you have to redo it. Achi itlenu, hey menu, v'yachser, v'itnenu, v'yermila gitach. Let's read. Why do we have to discuss both cases? The same achleik is in both cases. The yit ma bach kamaisa. We only discussed the first part of the brisa. I would say, by he come a rebbe, the rebbe says you can just, you know, follow up with the words without redoing the whole act. Because she was eligible for the divorce, she was awake, she was aware. So now you just add the words and you're done. Avol nasam biyad of yishena, but in the second case where she took it while she was sleeping, labar gerushu, she's not eligible for gerushin at that point. She's not cognizant. Perhaps in this case, everybody agrees that you have to redo the process. So that's why we mentioned that case as well. No. According to Rebbe, you don't have to do a redo. Had we only discussed this case of the sleeping wife, Balkan Rav Shimon I would say in that case, Rav Shimon insists on redoing the whole thing because she was ineligible, she wasn't aware. But perhaps in the first case, he would agree with Rebbe that all you need to do is add those words, you don't have to redo the whole thing. That's why we mentioned both cases. In both situations, we have the same achleikas. Rebbe says all you need to do is say the words, hey, gitach, the magic words. According to Rav Shimon you have to redo the whole nesina. Amarav, one more case. Kosov will get, so he has a get for her, and who does he give it to? But Nesana Biad Avdo. She happened to have a slave, she owns an Evid. He puts the get in the hands of the Evid, which is like giving it to her, it's her property, right? Now he was Yashin, he was asleep at the time. Umishamarta, she's standing over him, so she should have in control of what he's holding. How raise the get, it works. Because it's a Chatzar. Which is being controlled by her. That's called Chatzar Mishtameres Ladaita, like we discussed yesterday. But if he's awake, and he's his own person, Niyar, he's awake, ain't again, doesn't work. Now, who's controlling the Chatzar? Who's in the driver's seat? The Evid. He's an independent person. So it's not considered a delivery to the Isha. Asks the Gemara, well, so let's say he's asleep. Yosh and Mishamarta is a get. Why? Amai. We have another problem. Chatzah Malachasi. By definition, this ever is a walking Chatzah. Chatzah Malachas Laikana. Chatzah has to be a stationary entity. So um, it doesn't work. Even though at present he's immobile, but by definition he's a walking Chatzah. Perhaps I would say Yashin Shani, the fact that he's sleeping, changes the equation. No. We look at the essence of this entity. Va'amar Rav, Rav himself tells us, Kol she'ilu mahalach le'kana. If you have something which, if it would be on the move, it wouldn't work. Ay midvi yashin le'kana. Even if he's standing or sitting, and say, it doesn't work. By definition, he doesn't qualify. Vilchas of Bukhafas was speaking that he was tied up. <laughs> so he's totally immobile. He can't even walk if he wanted to. So in this case we say, that it's a proper chatzah 
Right? And since he's asleep, he's totally subservient to her. She's totally in control. And it's considered a gay rishon. Okay, so let's just summarize this Ahmad Gemara. We started with the halacha of the get in the bed. If it's her bed and it's big enough that it's a separate makim, it's considered an acquisition of the get. We discuss cheke and kalsa, many reasons why kalsa works. And we went on to the Mishnah that the words hey have to be a comp have to accompany the Nasina Saget. If he fails to say that, according to Rebbe, just add it. According to Hashem Allah, they have to redo the Nasina. Placing a get in her Evet's hand work, provided he's totally under her control. Continues the Mishnah. Suppose she's standing in the street. With Zarkal, he tosses the get in her direction. And it lands on the floor. Does it work? Well, it depends how close to her it is. Kodav lo mikoreshes. If it lands right next to her, it works. Kodav lo yenem mikoreshes. Near him, it doesn't work. Mechta mechta, half and half. Mikoreshes and mikoreshes. Well, that's a suffix. We're not sure how to deal with that. Now, by the way, this Lashen Karev, Karev lo, Karev lo, can have several definitions, as we'll see in the Gemara. Now, just like this works with get, v'chein in kedushin. Take a ring and you toss it to the Isha. Here, I want you to be my wife. It lands on the floor, next to her it works, next to him it doesn't. Same story. The same thing regarding repaying a loan. I owe you a million dollars. And you tell me, look, uh, throw it to me. So the creditor tells the borrower, yeah, please throw me the money. And he does so. It lands on the floor and it gets lost or whatever. If it landed near the Malve, it works. Malve. But if it landed near the loyve, then it never left his domain. Now, if something goes wrong, the money disappears, the loyve has to pay again. We say, they have to split it 50 50. So it's, you know, partially responsible. Now, what does it mean near him, near her? We're speaking about the street here, right? What do we mean when we say near her, near him? So let's go about uh, discussing the get story. Tosses the get to the Isha. Near her, it's hers. Near him, it doesn't work. So Rashi brings the Gemara Bavim Tzeda Fiyod. Dalad Amay Shal Adam Koyin Yisla. Even if you're walking in the street, something is within your personal domain. For Amay is considered the makim of a person. Typically, that's the size of a person lying on the floor with his hands, you know, stretched out. So, anything within four amas of a person is considered to be lying in his personal domain, even if it's public territory, on the street. It's close enough to you, you're in control of that spot, you're kind of. As though it would be placed in your backyard. So the get lands within four amas of the Isha, it's hers. If it lands within four amas of the man, it's his. So again, Arba Amay Shalom, if it's within her her four Amis, Zeo Karavla, that's called hers. Arba Amay Shalom, Zeo Karavla, that's near him. Echidami Mechza Mechza. Well, the Mishnah had a third example. If it landed, you know, half and half, how does that work? Amar Rav Shmuel Rav Yitzhak, you're going to show you Shneim Oimdim Ba Arba Amis. They're both standing within the same four Amas square. And the get is sitting there. That's called half and half. They both have equal writes to that cube. Why? Says the Gemara Velechsi. Let's figure out who got there first. I mean, I who caught him. Whoever got there first it identifies with him. Perhaps they both came to the same split second. That's impossible. Well, you have to let You can't work it out so perfectly. Let's figure out who got there first. Elam of Kahana was speaking Hacha because Amos Mitzum Tzomas Askinan. No, no, we're not speaking about the same four Amis. Picture an area which is eight Amis long, four Amis wide. He's standing on one side, she's standing on the other. So basically, their four Amis are adjacent to each other, right next to each other. Where my four Amis and your four Amis begin. And where's the get? Right on that boundary. The get is half in the man's four Amis and half in the woman's four Amis. That's mechza mechza. That's a suffix. Ask the Gemara. That's not a suffix. But Agid Gabei, the get is is still tied to him. And Rashi says, even if 
only part of the get is still in his area. That's not called Venosam Biyad. Venosam Biyad means Achi Hei Kula says Rashi. It's totally by her. So 50% is not called Venosam Biyad. In this case, 50% is nothing. It's either totally by her, it's either all or nothing. Ella Rabba Rav Eisam and they both explain the mission differently. I can't be speaking about this case. That wouldn't work. How do we have a 50 50 case? It means like this. We have a conflicting presentation being presented by two pairs of Aidan as to what happened. Was it close to him or the land close to her? That's what Nasa Mechsam means. We're stuck. One set of Aidan are testifying that the, the get never left his four armies. The other one is saying, no, no, land the next verse. That's the suffix that the Mishnah speaks about. She's a suffix of the So this is Hushita. This is Rav's interpretation of the Mishnah. Closeness, Karev, indicates the four Amma, you know, personal domain that's given to a person for Kinyan. Rav Yechon Oymar, he has a different interpretation of what close means, what Karev means. Karev lo shaninu. Look, the Mishnah doesn't speak about four Amis. Mishnah speaks about something which is close to the person. Afilu meya ama. Even if it's a hundred amas away. It doesn't matter. It works. Vikarev loishaninu. When the Mishnah speaks about the get landing next to him. We're not limited to four amas. Afilu meya ama. Even if it's, you know, a hundred amas away. And soon the Gemara will explain why and how this works. Hey, Chidami, now, you've explained what close means, but what does Mechza Mechza mean? How do you have half and half, right? Amr of Sambar Abba, the Dima Farshli, Mineder Rabbi Yechon, it was explained to me from Rabbi Yechon, and now he's going to explain the entire thing here. What did Rabbi Yechon mean when he said Karav Loi means even 100 Amis, etc.? It means like this. It's all a matter of who's controlling the get. Well, Mala Street, but whoever has control, exclusive control, that's called Karevlai. Or Karevla. Who Yachal Suppose the get is sitting anywhere in the area, but he has access to the get. And she can't. Let's say there's a fence in her way. She can't, you know, look after the get. She can't guard the get. Only he could do it. That's called within his domain. That's not called an Asina Saget. That's not Gerushin. Zeo Karevlai. And the same in the reverse. He Yechaydu L'Shem Roy. Hu Eni Yechal L'Shem Roy. Suppose she can guard the get, but he can't. That's called Zeo Karevla. And it's under her auspices. It's in her domain. And she's divorced. Shnei Yechaydu L'Shem Roy. They both have equal access to the get. They can both watch it and guard it. Or the other way, Shneim Ein Yechayim Neshem Rei, they both cannot access the get, they're both sort of uh, behind the fence. Zeo Mechza Mechza, that's the case of Mechza Mechza, which is a suffix. This is a novel approach to the Mishnah. We're not speaking about, you know, feet and inches here. We're speaking about a conceptual closeness, access, control. Amru Rabon Kameid Rabbi Yechon, Mishmeid Rabbi Yechon, Hachi. So, in fact, the Rabbonon, Told Rabbi Yechanan, the same pshat, this pshat in the Mishnah, the name of Rabbi Yechanan, he was very impressed. Omar, he said, wow, Yodan Charem Bavloi Lefrushki Atayma, our friends in Bavl. Like Rabbi Yechanan, know how to explain the Mishnah so well? I like that pshat. It's a correct pshat. Tanin Amihachi. We find this pshat in a bright as well. Rabbi Yechanan, Rabbi Yechanan, Rabbi Yechanan, Rabbi Yechanan, Rabbi Yechanan, so the Bryce says like this. If the get is closer to him than to her, okay, landed right there, and then a dog comes and ran away with the get. It doesn't work. So before we get our bearings, let's just, what, what does he mean? Enemagoreshes? Just when the dog snatched the get, it was already landed, it was already received by the Isha. Why? Kalehechi, Tintrev, it tastes how long does she have to watch the get? Well, she's divorced, she's divorced, who cares what happened later? So apparently, because of this kasha, we have to, you know, take a fresh look at the Bryce. The Bryce means like this. Suppose the get lands closer to her than to him. But 
But theoretically, let's say there's a, fe- it's closer to her in terms of inches and feet, but there's a, a fence blocking the get. She can't access the get. She can't protect the get. In fact, suppose, theoretically, it's a hypothetical scenario. Suppose a dog would come running, grab the get, and he would have the ability to run after, chase the dog away, watch the get. Because there's no obstruction between him and the get. She can't because there's a fence or something blocking. In a regression, in this case, it doesn't work. So, so bottom line is you see clearly that it's not a matter of distance, it's a matter of control. Who can guard the get? Who can watch the get? You have a case where the get is right next to her, but she, she can't do anything about it. It doesn't work. So it's a right to Rabbi Yechon's approach to the mission. Amr lei shmul Rabbi Yehuda. So now we have Rav's pshat in the mission. Within four armies. Rabbi Yechon's pshat, control. Here comes the third pshat. Amr lei shmul, shmul told the Rabbi Yehuda. Shinana, sharp one. That's what he used to call him, sharp one. Now, don't work with uh, for Amoy, so with Kadesha to Shuach Vitlanu. Kara means it's close enough that you can simply bend down and pick it up. That's what it means. And the Kara Vloi means he can do the same. And Machza uh, Machza means they can both. And you know what? I don't want you to actually apply this Lahalacha Lamais, it's confusing. Va'atle to Avad Uvda. Should a, a case come to you, don't actually carry out and apply this idea. Only consider her divorced when, you know, when when the get actually is delivered into her hands. You know, otherwise it's a gzera. Otherwise, you know, people will say, oh, it's close enough. Wasn't Rashi explains it's a gzera. Close might turn into far. She got it. It's hers. Otherwise not. In fact, it was a story like that. You know that uh, the husband tossed the get to his wife and landed on the floor next to her. Then he passed away without kids. Question, was she divorced or not? But Zeruah Chalitza and the Chachamim required her to do Chalitza because of this Chumrah of Shmuel to avoid confusion. Just like it works by Gitin, Chayin and Kedushin. Same thing with marrying Anisha. He tossed the ring to her. Same story. If it's near her, it's hers. She's yours. Otherwise, right? Or Rasa Rabbi Yechanan, Legitin Amr Vloy No. We only apply this formula to divorce and not to anything else. And, uh, you know, the Farshim seek to explain this to Chiddush, like why would it only work over here, not over there? They say maybe because by get, you can do it val karcha, so she doesn't actually have to, you know, play a very central role in receiving the get. Even a weakness seen as enough, a weak delivery, so this would work, but not nothing else. Not by uh, Kiddushin and not by, you know, Returning uh, your loan. What do you mean? Look at the mission. It works by Kedushin as well. Well, Kedushin is different. We have this famous hekesh, right? Between uh, divorce and marriage. It says, That's divorce. Then it says, Marry the other person. So we connect divorce to marriage. We apply the same principles to both. He asked further. What does the mission say regarding returning uh, a loan? Right? It's rightly chayvi. Yeah, throw me the money. He throws it in. Karvel malve. If it landed near the malve, zachar loyve. Karvel loyve, loyve chayv. Mechza mechza shnei mechloik. So you see that the same idea applies to returning a loan. So he says, this is not a typical case. We're speaking about an exceptional case. My skin was speaking. The armale is rightly chayvi viti potter. The malve, the bank, told him, look. You know, typically you can't just throw money in. But here I'm letting you do it. You throw it to me, and I get it, you're a potter. So there's a special exception, a special exemption. Well, if that's the case, why would I discuss it? That's ABC, right? Apparently, the Amorle, he said it to him a little bit differently, more lumdish. He spoke a bit cryptically. He said, look, uh, you owe me the money? Please send it back to me. Throw it to me, just like, uh, well, follow the, the uh, guidelines of, <laughs> of divorce. Which allows, you know, this process to work. Throwing and landing. So if he said it so clearly, then why, again, why discuss it? Perhaps I would think, the creditor can tell the lawyer, uh, I'm just playing around with you, I'm, you know, being silly. I never really meant it, and it doesn't really work. 
And if it got lost before I actually took possession, uh, you haven't paid me back. Mashmon the Chiddush Mishnah yes. He said it, we take his word for it. Says the Gemara of Chizda, Gate be Yada Meshicha be Yada. So he took the get, placed it directly into his wife's hands, get be Yada, but the get happens to have some sort of a ribbon which he's holding on to. Does it count as divorce or not? Is it considered delivered to the Isha? Well, it depends whether he can pull it back, which would mean that he still has control over the get and doesn't work. Im Natka, if that ribbon is strong enough that he can tug it and pull back the get, Lovia Epsilon, bring back the get, it's not, not a Gerushin. Im but otherwise, should he pull the strap, it would snap, and she would stay with the get, Mugoresh. It works. Says the Gemara, My, my time, huh? just because you can force it back, well, what's wrong? Being in crisis. You see, the Pasuk says, if not going say a crisis, a total separation, disengagement. But look, he's still grabbing on. That's not called in a scene a second. Suppose he put it into her hands, but she was holding her hands on an angle, on a downward slope, and he threw the gun into her hands and it slid down onto the floor. Vizarkala, Afal Bisha Gigatli, even get passed through her hands, and it doesn't work. A mice is more why? Where did they get lands? We're assuming it landed right next to her feet. Haki nafal ba arba amis did dokanafal fell within the four amis. But the lenach was speaking that didn't land. It went straight into a fire and got burnt. So what? Vitigarish ma vira the arba amis. But it was in the airspace of her four ama personal, you know, domain. Airspace is considered her place as well. Is it not? Well, Tivshait, if you're not considering it, then you can use this to provide clarity. The boy of blood, blood had a shaila. This is very shaila. Arba Ames, Shamru. You know, the four Ames that we give a person. Yeshla and Avr. What about the airspace of the four Ames? Is that as good as the actual land below? Or do we say no? Only if it landed in the karka, but airspace doesn't give you any rights. So based on your halacha, we see it doesn't uh, it doesn't count. Avr, you can conclude from this halacha that airspace of Yefor Amis doesn't count. No, says the Gemara. My skin was speaking by Menes al What happened when she was standing with her hands like that over the river? The Mikar Initially, when he put the gun into her hands and it slid down, we knew good and well that that's it. It was going to get lost. Rashi says on the last line, Al Gavanor, the Avers Enoi Roi Lanuach Lekani. This airspace is worse than your typical airspace, which eventually, you know, eventually lands, right? So if something is fluttering on top of your forearm is slated to land, so perhaps, you know, you don't have to wait for it to land. The airspace is sort of an extension of the ground below. But if we know good and well, there's a river, there's a fire there. It's about to land in the river, the fire. It's going to be gone. It's going to be lost, incinerated, gone. It's not even ro'i l'noyach. It's not slated to land. It's not able to land within your arba amis. That's way worse. And uh, there's no Kenyan like that. Okay, let's uh, quick, uh, quickly chazer uh, today's daf. We started with the get put into her mita. We explain why it works. With the chekel to kalsa, we explain why that worked. Uh, if you pretend that it's just a shtar if you didn't say hey gitach, uh, you have to actually say hey gitach and make her aware of the fact that it's a get. We have the get placed into her evet's hands. In some cases, it works. We have the Mishnah throwing a get to the isha. Karev law works. What does Karev law mean? Rav's Pshad is within four Amis. Rabbi Echon says she has control over the get. And Shmuel Paskind, only if she can bend down and pick it up. Mar says that uh, these things only work by Gitin and, and Kedushin. And we have the Allah that if the uh, strap can allow him to pull the get back, it, uh, it's still considered in his control. It's not Croesus. And likewise, if they get just slid out of her hands and was immediately destroyed, that requires a redo. All the best to you and Hatzlacharab.